Hum! So much hum! I can't remember the last time I've experienced this much hum in such a short amount of time. For reference, it took me a little over 20 minutes to wrap up the demo of Perseus' Titan Slayer. And you know what? It might have been the most cliched, hummy, angry version of the Greek Pantheon I've seen in ages. But I had fun. Perseus' Titan Slayer made for a strange demo. Its interface is sparse, though pretty to look at thanks to some topical illustrations. Its systems are badly explained. It takes a good few minutes to even realize what exactly this game is. But realize I have. This is a budget roguelike hack and slash game. It also refuses to change your character's appearance based on the loot that they collect. Its loot merely changes your stats and allows you to socket gems that bring you some kind of impactful bonus. Additional burn damage during attacks, for example. It reminded me of Path of Exile, one of the biggest hack and slash games out there, but under a particular set of conditions. Now I'm going to do a comparison that is... Unfortunately, none too kind to Perseus' Titan Slayer, but it bears repeating because there is something about the game that reminds you of PoE. Imagine if someone tore apart Path of Exile's item economy, removed its potion system, the impactful nature of its gemstones, the haunting music, the interesting world building, and you get something thereabouts in the area of Perseus' Titan Slayer. You get what I'm saying. What struck me as recalling Path of Exile in the first place was in elements of the interface, such as its hotbar, and in the overall graphic style of the game, which creates a somber atmosphere similar to that you will find in PoE. There's weight to the animations as well which also reminds me of the aforementioned classic of the hack and slash genre. As for the music, I've already forgotten it, which, honestly, not a good sign. As far as roguelites or roguelikes go, and I can't tell you which one Perseus Titan Slayer is because I didn't die and so I don't know if there are any perpetual resources that you gather in between your runs, I'll assume there are. As far as these go, Perseus wasn't all that difficult. I had to be a little careful, had to drink my potions during a boss fight with Medusa, and maybe it's just that the demo wraps up before the game stops pulling its punches. It seems that motion is key. If you stop moving, you will die in 3 to 4 seconds. But if you keep moving, that will not be much of a problem. Not with most of the enemy types you encounter at the level of play that the demo gives you access to. But I didn't have that. That is a hair trigger from claiming me feeling that often goes hand in hand with the greatest examples of the roguelike genre. All these caveats aside, this does scratch that hack and slash RPG itch I get now and then. The weapon animations were eye-catching and elegant. Using abilities had that crunchy feeling you absolutely want abilities to have in the hack and slash genre of gaming, and the ludicrous over-the-top nature of the voiceovers had me grinning and even chuckling in disbelief throughout. You shall shout things that are yet to come. It's uh, not good but it is bad in a way that is entertaining, if not much else. The roguelike experiences are much quicker power scaling than something like Path of Exile or Diablo 3 would, and I suspect that by the end of a run in Perseus, the impact of your abilities will be fierce indeed. That said, there really isn't anywhere near a sense of depth in the demo that you have in most non row like hack and slash games, but whether that's because the demo is just a very small chunk of the overall roguelike progression, or because there isn't any great depth in the game in general, I cannot judge based on the demo alone. 
I do have to say, I'm not sure this is going to be an objectively good game, folks. After writing most of my impressions down, I decided to see when it would be releasing and just what this game was pitching itself as. To my shock, it's coming out on February the 13th, which... shocking. Honestly, I thought some of the art was placeholder. A lot of the art, it simply doesn't look all the way finished. Or maybe if not unfinished, then it certainly doesn't seem like it comes together into this thematically cohesive unity that you would expect from a finished game. Now, because I played the game fairly late at night, I decided to actually hit pause on the recording here and went back, played through the demo once more, and I have to say, the art isn't as bad as I make it sound to be originally, but I still cannot help but feel that there is something missing. It's almost like the art is too lean, like it doesn't have enough crunch to it, which is a weird way to describe it, but it's also the best way I can describe it. It just doesn't catch the eye in the way that you want art in video games, especially in this genre where you want art to be shiny, to be gothic almost. Here it is, just run-of-the-mill fantasy with Greek aftertastes, and that doesn't necessarily invite interest. Anyway, let's move on from the art, shall we? And then I looked at the reviews the store page on Steam shows off, and they are, I kid you not, as follows. IGN says, best new game trailers, week of October 24th, 2022. Gaming Live says, battle the Titans in Perseus, Titan Slayer, new gameplay preview. And Worth Playing says, Perseus, Titan Slayer, is a hack and slash, roguelike coming to PC in 2023. You know what? I'll add to these. Perseus Titan Slayer is a game that's coming out in 2023. About as much impact as any of these have. These aren't reviews, my dudes. I don't mean to be mean, but even looking past this section and onto the um, about the game section, the information is just so sparse. It's Spartan. I understand the necessity for brevity more than most, but there are times you want to add some frills, like to the names of your four distinct weapon types. Maybe don't call them sword, bow, dagger and katana. Add some personality to them. Everyone remembers the weapons in Hades, not just by design, but by name as well. There are different aspects, aspects of Arter. You know, so many different ways to go about making the elements of your game memorable, and they are not to be found in Perseus Titan Slayer, which is a shame because the Coral Loop is fun. And naturally, judging a game by its Steam page is not always the best decision because that is the role of marketing to manage and not the role of the entire team. But it also hints at something being a little off, and that's what I want to highlight here. Well, I don't know what's going to become of this game once it comes out. I'll probably check up on the Steam reviews, because I'm curious if people will enjoy this one. But will I pick this up? Doubtful. There are plenty of amazing games that wow you from the fifth minute onwards, even less from the first. Perseus Titan Slayer? That ain't it, Chief! Well, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye!